Don't give up. Don't you do it. Welcome to The Hopefulist, a daily talk show hosted by veteran broadcaster Wendy McClure. Join Wendy each day as she shares her life lessons that transformed her from perpetual pessimist to the ultimate hopefulist. The perfect morning show to get you caught up on the day's top stories while sharing insights that will lead to positive transformation and bring out the hopefulist in you. For more inspiration, visit hopefulist.com. And now, here's your host and hopefulist, Wendy McClure. Hello, and thank you for joining me today on The Hopefulist. I hope you're ready for your daily dose of inspiration and positivity, the quote of the day. If you're tired of starting over, stop giving up. It's that simple. Stop giving up. Of course, much more in today's blog post. Did you have yourself a snow day yesterday? Did you get lots and lots of snow? I know I see a lot of people on Facebook complaining about all the snow. I can imagine that after a certain amount, it becomes very daunting. You know what we got here? Rain. Rain and 50 mile per hour winds. Oh, and let's not forget the flooding. That's right. So about half our yard got flooded yesterday. And then little Miss Tucker decided to get up at 2.30 this morning. And I took her, I had to take her out front because the entire backyard, side yard, and a good portion of the front yard was underwater. You know, that's the biggest problem with this flooding. It's got nowhere to take the dog. (laughs) So I just took her out front. I didn't put her on a leash or anything because, you know. I don't figure she's going to run away. And um, so she just keeps inching, looking for a spot closer and closer to the water. And I'm like, Tucker, Tucker, come here. Get over here. Back over here. Completely ignoring me as usual. She does hear me talking about her now. She's looking over at me. Hi, Tucker. Yeah, she got me up at 2.30 this morning. Not gotten back to sleep yet. So doing the podcast a little earlier than usual. And then uh, once I... Find out that my honey, my hubby, made it to work safe and sound. I will be heading back to the bedroom to catch up on some Z's. Joe took a snow day yesterday, did not go into work. Then, huh, alas, did not turn out to be as bad as it was supposed to be. He said that he would have rather gone into work yesterday and taken today off. But he just checked in with me, said he's about halfway there. Not so bad, he said. So, there you go. Hopefully you don't have to go out, but if you do, um, yeah, no matter what the road looks like, even if you think it's just wet, go slow. Traffic reporter coming out in me. That's right. Take it easy. From what I'm seeing on the news, most of the road's not in great shape. The only roads I'm seeing that are really in good shape are like 95 in the Schuylkill Expressway in Philly. Other than that, everything else kind of looks like a bit of a mess. So take it easy, go slow, and be careful. Speaking of the weather, it is Groundhog Day. Happy Groundhog Day. They will pull that sucker out of that hole. They do it every year. He never wants to come out. He always is forced to. And we shall see if we have... Six more weeks of winter or an early spring. I love how they always do that. Or an early spring. What's an early spring? In six more weeks? Come on. What does all this mean? But I wanted to know, did you have a rodent friend as a kid? Now, collectively, we had a Fluffy when I was very young. Fluffy did not come to a good ending. I'll leave it at that. Um, But I did have my own personal hamster later that I had named Champ, and uh, he did not have the the greatest of endings either. These little ones, these little fluffy things, they don't last very long. Um, I know that we had some guinea pigs. I know that we had some gerbils. Um, We also had rabbits, but I don't think rabbits are considered rodents. Gigi says, I had gerbils. They were named Whiskey and Gin. Oh. Uh, Was that when she was a kid? (laughs) Did she name them? 
Marcy says, we had a groundhog that used to live under our shed. He was always eating clover in the yard, so my kids called him Hungry Munchie. It's very cute. Andrew says, I had gerbils, lots of gerbils. The first two were Ben and Willard. For those of you too young to remember, I think it is a group or a song. I'm not entirely sure. Dana says, I had a hamster named Zoe named after David Bowie's son. I used to call him Zoe Bowie. I loved that hamster to death. He lived to be two and a half years old. That's a pretty good age for a hamster. Mary says, my husband had a guinea pig named Homer. I only had the mice the cats brought me. Oh, yuck. Corinne says, my mom did not allow rodents. When I grew up, I had hamsters and guinea pigs in my classroom. So, I don't know. We'll all be fun. A little bit sorry for uh, Phil a little bit later. That's right. Puxitani Phil is one big day of the year. Moving on to the blog post and the topic of the day. We are talking about persistence. And that's what we will be focusing on for the rest of this month. That's right. New month, new topic, new focus. So how are you doing with those new year goals, resolutions, and new habits? Not so great? Yeah, I hear you. I'm doing okay with some things, not good at all with others. But if we don't want to start from scratch all over again, we must persevere. No matter how little progress we've made, we've likely made some good adjustments So don't throw in the towel. Work on those adjustments. Work off of those adjustments even and build on them. Even if you have to reassess your goals and make them a little less ambitious, it's better to get there slowly than not at all. Am I right? I'm doing well with my workouts. I've been getting almost all of them in. My eating is pretty good. Could be better, but I'm a work in progress. But here's the thing. I feel better. Physically and mentally, I feel better in my body overall with more healthy eating and intermittent fasting. I'm also getting stronger, and I can push myself further in my workouts. I also feel good about myself because I'm keeping my promises to myself. I go through my day knowing I will do what I say I will do. That's a good feeling. It doesn't mean we beat and berate ourselves When we slip up, because we will slip up, we need to chalk it up and keep going. Instead of expecting too much of ourselves, we should be willing to take baby steps to make it manageable. Then once we get one new habit under our belt, we can start to work on another. Here's the thing, though, and we all know this. We all know this. Nothing happens overnight, but yet we expect results immediately. All good things take time. It's hard to break bad habits and start good ones. So be graceful with yourself and just focus on the good instead of the bad. You may have had that brownie at work, but you had a salad for dinner, or you got in more water than you usually do, or you took the dog for a longer walk. Just like in all areas of life, focus on the positive. When you get tempted to give up because it's hard, Because it will be hard. Think about the results you are looking for and why. Are you trying to lose weight? Is it to look better come summer? How far away is summer? You have plenty of time. So don't try to change everything at once. Are you working toward a promotion at work but are tired of being the only one putting in extra effort? Think about what that promotion and more money will mean for your life to keep up your momentum. Focus on the glowing employee reviews you will get and how you can take those and the experience anywhere you want to go. There will be times that you want to give up altogether. You're just like, you know what? This is hard. I'm tired of it. I just want to go back to my normal, lazy life. No, don't do that. Keep at it. Soon it won't feel so hard. Soon it will just be your way of life. All good things come with a price. We can all make changes though. Just not too many at once. If we focus on the end goal and how we feel through the process, it will help us to persist 
in our goals. And if that's something that you really want, if it's something that you really want, like a new career or going back to school or selling your movie script, keep going. Don't take no for an answer. Keep asking people who can help you. But I urge you, get that thick skin on because rejection can take a toll. So space it out. Remember, 12 publishers turned down J.K. Rowling for her book, Harry Potter. How much do you think they are kicking themselves now? Keep putting your best foot forward. Be persistent. And the rewards will come. Tuesday already. Ugh, you had a snow day yesterday. I hope you enjoyed it. And now it's time to get on back out there and be your badass self. I'm right here, as always, cheering you on. Thank you for listening to The Hope List, hosted by Wendy McClure. For more inspiration, please visit hopefulist.com. Thanks, and we'll see you tomorrow on The Hopefulist. You can do it.